All right, so how are you all guys doing? Um, I'm Coach Energy, and today is the first episode of The Heel Shift. I'm really, really, really excited for this. Um, I announced it very briefly, and there's a reason for that, because I want to talk about it here quickly before we get started. So The Heel Shift is a series of episodes that are gonna, that are gonna be taking place um, every Saturdays and Sundays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it started because of the foundation of the HEAL community. The HEAL community is a platform uniting hearts together to inspire and empower you to HEAL and become your greatest version. So the first day we founded HEAL, we partnered up with Direct Relief, an organization that um, basically supports workers, healthcare workers in meaningful ways. And until now, we were able to raise um, $500 in both direct donations and donations through the fundraiser that we created, which is amazing in, I think, less than a month. In le yeah, in less than a month because we started the Heal Community on June 2nd. In less than a month, we raised $500 and our goal was $1,000, which is crazy. And that's amazing because 100% donations go to direct relief and Facebook does not take a cut. So thank you so much to each and every one of you who donated and it's amazing the power when each and every one of us provides a helping hand and it's just beautiful what we have been able to do with and for direct relief. Um, so basically we decided to start the HEAL community and the HEAL community is co-founded by uh, the Happiness World Project and I who you will be seeing on the next live stream next week hopefully on Saturday which I'm really excited to for you to get to know her and to get to know more about me too. Um, and one of the most exciting things that is uh, really a coincidence is that the Happiness World Project and I actually met through this Instagram account, Your Energy Frequency, and this is how I've been able to connect with so many of you, which is such an amazing thing for those of you who know I have a background with social media and so it's really amazing to be able to connect with so many great people and to see some of the positive sides of social media. Um, that being said, we will be doing those live streams every single Saturdays and Sundays again at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so make sure to save the date and um, I will be guesting a special guest every single Saturday and Sunday. On most Saturdays you'll see the Happiness World Project and on Sundays you will see a special guest from psychiatrists to psychologists to mental health professionals to counselors to spiritual coaches holistic mentors um, mental health advocates and even some of you guys you can be a guest on the live stream but to make things even cooler every single live stream is going to be really powerful and really impactful I am very careful in selecting the guests who attend those live streams because I want to make sure that you are the time that you're spending in this one hour I want to make sure that it's going to be very impactful and is gonna really make an impact on your life or at least on the week that's coming ahead and that is really going to be very powerful uh, the other thing is that the other cool thing is not only do you get free knowledge tips advice or just a perspective from professionals in their field but also we're gonna be doing a giveaway in every single live stream starting next week so not this live stream where you can win anything from apple airpods to mental health worksheets to uh, gift cards to uh, literally we have so many ideas and a lot of them are going to be around mental health and trying to basically impact you and make a difference so not only do you get free advice or tips or a perspective at least from a mental health professional and you get to engage and interact or with a coach or someone in the mental health field whether it's an advocate or um, a coach or a professional but also you get to win possibly something if you were are the winner of the giveaway and it's going to happen every saturday and sunday so you have two chances a week which is really awesome and um this is going to be very beneficial the reason why uh, we are doing this is because i really want to be able to give back to the community and i want to do i i believe uh, you know in 
both uh, being of service to yourself but also being of service to others and contributing and I want to do anything I can to serve so I really want to get as many professionals as I can for you guys to ask your questions your thoughts your doubts surrounding mental health or just any struggles that you face in life and just get some sort of perspective and engage with those professionals and a lot of those professionals are going to be coming back so they're going to be recurring from time to time whenever they can and that's the most exciting part because you guys get to engage with them on a very uh, more of an intimate level and more of a personal level and that would be really exciting and even we're going to be guesting some of you with those professionals and if you would like so that you can just get to ask your questions starting next week now i know this live stream is happening here um, however as of next week it's going to be happening on the heal community so if you did not follow heal community follow like subscribe to instagram um, facebook twitter and youtube heal community everywhere we're going to be launching and there's even going to be um, coaching and counseling services that are going to be offered more on that coming later um, hi Seth trades hi plur 1400 a healing queen uh, empress of self-love Sar Cindy, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. So I was just introducing the live stream. Um, can you pin the name or link? Yeah, sure. So be sure to follow Heal Community everywhere. I just pinned it below. Um, you can find it on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, we just launched, so content is going to be posted as of Tuesday onwards, this coming Tuesday onwards, and we're going to be very, very, very active there. I strongly encourage you to uh, join the community because this is going to be really, really, really powerful. And um, I can't wait to really share with you and be able to show you and share my own healing journey, but also you get to share your healing journeys as this is a community for you to inspire and empower one another to heal and live our greatest versions. That being said, I don't wanna to take too much time. I want to now introduce our guest. Today's guest is Dr. Iru Fernando, and um, he's a general and addiction psychiatrist. And um, I actually met Dr. Iru literally, I think a few weeks after I started this Instagram account from being away from social media for like two years or so. Um, so I connected with him and one of us messaged the other, I don't remember who, and we didn't talk much. We just ended up calling one another and it was meant to be like a 30 minute call ended up over two hours of speaking and we connected instantly and since then we've been talking and he's an amazing individual and um, I recommend you to check out his Instagram which will um, announce towards the end of this live stream um, what he does is you know I've met so many different mental health professionals, psychiatrists, counselors, therapists, um, and the like. And what I love about Dr. Iru is that he is very, very, very transparent. And um, I love how personal he is. And I love how he shares his own experiences and is advocating for Medicare for All, which is amazing and really, really beautiful. Honestly, one of the most amazing individuals I met through Instagram, but I never really met face to face, and this will kind of be the first time, kind of, virtually. Um, can you cover, will you cover the topic of manifesting and meditating? Yes, we will. Not today, but yes, we will. Today's topic will be about uh, coping versus thriving with mental illness, something that I'm very interested in, um, and how you can start to make change and we're gonna tie it a little bit in with dr iru's background with addiction and uh yeah so i'm super excited uh dr iru are you in this live stream i think you are i saw you somewhere if you are click request to be live I see you. 
go live. Okay, I'm gonna go live with you. One second. Hey. Hello, how are you doing, Iru? Good, good. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. That was, uh, <laughs> that really meant a lot to me. <laughs> no problem. I wanted to keep it also short so that you get your own chance to speak for yourself. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a really great thing that you started here. Um, I, this is my first, first time doing a live stream myself. And uh, already I can just tell with all the people asking all these amazing questions, just so interested about uh, mental health, that this is a really amazing community. So uh, well done in, in even just creating this whole thing. Thank you. I really appreciate you for saying that. Um, and it's also, it's also you're, you're the first guest, which is really nice. And uh, it's so exciting to be able to see that people connect over time, even though it's the first live stream, there's uh, a bunch of people here, which is really great to see. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, uh, uh, what you do, why you do what you do, and uh, what are some of your hobbies and things that you do. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so I was actually born in, in a country called Sri Lanka. Uh, it's a small island below uh, India. But I moved when I was super young. I was about three months old. And uh, because of my dad's job, we were just bouncing back and forth all over the place between Canada, United States, uh, Philippines at one point. So throughout that time, what I ended up having to do, because I was an only child as well, uh, was you kind of have to learn how to communicate with people and understand how to bond with them fairly quickly. So I think that's the reason why I just got super interested and I just love talking to people, understanding their stories, understanding why it is that they may be struggling with something. And so as I got into medical school, I tried to keep an open mind about what I was going to do. Uh, during college, yeah, I just loved psychology courses. And uh, it, it, it became pretty clear to me that there was just no other profession that was right for me apart from psychiatry. It was just something that was uh, just seemed perfect for the kind of person I was and what I was trying to do uh, in this world. And so um, then when I started to get more and more into psychiatry, I started to see all the issues that actually are kind of outside the person's uh, grasp. So for example, like not having health care in the United States of America. Um, not being able to get the treatment that you need, whether it be with therapy or with medications, just because there's no insurance. Um, and, there, and then the other thing that I'm also really passionate about is is the war on drugs, because uh, we should not be putting people in jail because they're suffering from an addiction, right? We should be trying to he heal them. You know, that's what we should be focusing on. And all this money that we're, we're wasting, really, putting people in jail. Think of all the good that we could do if we, we come and do more things like this, right? If we, if we create a community, um, that's how you heal people, right? So um, those are the things that I'm really passionate about. I'm just kind of passionate about all the issues in society and, and trying to uh, educate people. So that's what I'm doing with my newest uh, video series called Shrink Wrap. Mm -hmm. It's just talk about all the issues in, in, in the United States or even our world and try to get some solutions, try to like talk more and be able to converse with people, even if they have different opinions on you. Yeah, and that's, I think that's really amazing. I think that the way um, society can be is punish rather than help. And exactly. um, that's, that's, that's a very big concern. And I love how, you know, not only that you're doing it, but you have a psychiatry perspective and background and extensive experience. So you can really speak about it from a very educational perspective. And I really, really like that. And um, so I really appreciate you for making time to come here. And so um, I wanted to talk to you about, um, do you, from, from your experience, do you believe there is, because as from my personal experience, um, I've struggled with um, severe anxiety and OCD, both cognitive and behavioral, uh, PTSD, um, social anxiety, uh, insomnia for so many years that became chronic, and then I had to heal from it, uh, PTSD, uh, obesity, thyroid problems, a huge range of things, and being um, kind of an influencer on social media before didn't help with what I had faced. It's kind right. of contribute because of the cyber bullying that I talked a little bit about, but I plan to talk about more on it. So because of these experiences, um, I had kind of went on my own healing journey and this mm. is when I started the Heal community to share with them uh, my healing journey, but also give them a platform to share their own healing journeys and have a voice that can be exactly. heard and appreciated. And so 
Um, with that, you know, my question is, I've been personally taught, and I know a lot of people are taught that way, to cope rather than right. cope. And I have my personal point of view on that, but I want to hear yours before I share uh, what I think. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's really an important point that you're bringing up because you're, you're so right, you know, in our society, it's like, okay, you have a problem, fix it, and then that's kind of it, right? But it's not, you know, when, when, I, uh, when, a, when a person comes and sees me for the first time, my, my main goal is to try to get them to that level where they feel like themselves again, right? Uh, I think when you're suffering with mental health issues, there comes a point where you don't even feel like yourself. You might be so depressed. It might be so hard to go out and do the things that you need to do to get out of that um, kind of depression. So what I, my first thing is, yes, try to, try to get them to uh, just cope, if you will, with their mental health issues, get things stabilized. But at that point afterwards, I, I really try to push them to live their life. You know, what is it that you haven't done that you've always wanted to do, right? I mean, life is short and we need to take uh, as much ownership as we can and really go after the things that people may say, you know, you can't do that. Go for it, right? Just, just go for it. Why, why not? You know, that, that's the way to really thrive is to believe in yourself and try to find a community that also believes in you as well. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very important. The, the also, especially the last point that you said, finding a community to support you and a support system to kind of relate to because to feel that you're not alone. Because many people experience that feeling of being ostracized and right. feeling like they're alone. And this is also, I, I didn't talk about this and I will talk about it um, in detail next live stream. This is why also Heal, when we wrote the name of Heal, there's a comma at the end because it's people think that healing is a goal. It's mm. not an end goal. Death is an end goal. Uh, healing, <laughs> is, <laughs> healing is just kind of, it's a journey. And so there's a comma after it because then what's next? Okay, now you heal. We all start on this blank white canvas, and this is why the background is white of the heal community. But then where are you going from there? You want to heal, and that's where you start. And it's not just where you start. You're going to come back there many times because you need to heal. Healing is a journey, and that's why it's beautiful because of the challenges and the experiences and the joys and the downs that you learn from. And it's all a learning experience, and that's why you heal, but then there's a comma after it because now where are you going next? What's your goal and what's your dream? Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you, and you're so right about, uh, you know, you, you talked a little bit before about punish punishment, that, that kind of really being the main focus with, with, our, with our laws definitely here. And I think in Canada, there's certain laws, they're a little bit, um, they're a little bit better in terms of the social aspect, I feel, in Canada versus America. But yeah, we, we have this uh, unfortunately, our society does this thing where if you are even a little bit, uh, you have a different opinion, or if you say something, you know, not politically correct, instead of trying to educate that person and respond with love and empathy for whatever the reason that they have that, instead, we're just like, get out of here, we're going to cancel you, right? Like the cancel culture is so yeah. big right now. We have to combat that, in my opinion. Like, this is extremely dangerous, and it's, this is what's going to rip our society apart unless we, all of us, stand up and say no. Love is the answer. Let's try to figure these things out with each other. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm seriously so uh, happy that you, you're doing this right now. It, it's so important, uh, especially at this point right now. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you for saying that. And, you know, that's, that's really what we were also talking about before. Love is really the only answer. I think, you know, the COVID-19 really happened in the U.S. with Black Lives Matter showed us something very important. And I think people didn't learn that the first time from the COVID-19. And mm. it's really showing us what truly matters in life. You know, you can lose everything. You can lose your freedom to go out in a split second. And, right. and people, and literally, and people just forget what they're grateful for and forget to count their blessings. And it really shows us that our love for one another, just even physically standing next to one another, how important that is and how much it, it is conductive for our health and just living our lives. Right. Oh, so true. So true. I mean, what we're going through is unprecedented, right? Like, I, I don't think any of us even have fully understood how to cope with it because we're still going through it right now. <laughs> yeah. This is this is a trauma. This is a, this is a trauma for our whole society, and um, 
it is something that we're going to have to figure out how to navigate. Because like you said, with COVID, every, everyone's mental health issues has just like raised up a lot. a lot. So much more anxiety, depression. This isolation is so hard for us as human beings because, you know, just even being able to hug your friend. Um, you know, I miss doing that. You know, I, I, I love hugging people. And, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's difficult. It definitely is. Um, yeah. And what, what do you, how do you see people, you know, there are people saying the economy is never going to recover from this. And then there are people saying, I'm more concerned about the mental health of the people. What What's going to happen? Because I really feel that there's going to be a huge spike in like depression and uh, people who are experiencing mental health struggles because I and I've been hearing this a lot from people even on here that uh, they message me saying I've been feeling really depressed I've been feeling really sad and the next question I ask like what's going on for you to feel this way and they say well I've been sitting at home a lot and thinking a lot and when you sit at home and you have so much time on your hands that's when the thinking comes and you start to identify all the flaws with yourself and so exactly. How do you feel? What's going to happen to what do you think is going to happen? It's tough. You know, like back before COVID hit, one of the main suggestions I would have for people, because um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I never want people just to simply rely on medications to fix everything, right? It, I, I just use medications to get them to the level that they are. They should feel like themselves again. But then after that is living life, right? And what you said about staying home and that's when the depression hits, so many instances of that. You know, when I ask people, you know, what is anything going on? And they're usually saying, no, I'm like, well, are you going out? Are you doing things? They're like, no, I'm mostly at home. That's when depression comes, right? I mean, as human beings, I believe that we always feel like we have some purpose, some something that we want to contribute to this world, something to do with society. The hard thing is trying to do that, right? It, it's not actually easy to, to contribute. Uh, I mean, I remember trying to volunteer for quite a few places. And, you know, some certain volunteer organizations aren't that organized. And so you don't end up really feeling like you're doing the best you can. And so that's been actually a, a personal struggle for me is trying to figure out how can I best help people uh, with what I'm doing. And um, it, it, what I think the only so solution is this kind of thing, right? I mean, we, we met through Instagram. And yeah. we somehow ended up talking with each other, right? I know. Mean, um... It's wild. I mean, for me, that's wild because again, I was I was really much against social media before. Like, I did, I I didn't like posting. I was you know I'm scared of the NSA, you know, because they're like basically spying on us. So I was really uh, not wanting to do social media until I realized the power of it. Until I realized that there are these communities out there, and you have an ability to you know sp uh, spread your message through yeah. these kind of interactions. And yeah. so yeah, exactly. I mean, even for me, when I I. When you said you, you hated social media, that happened to me for two years too because I was on here and um, I had a community that ended up with 17 million people watching and I was like, oh my God. And I experienced a lot of cyberbullying for my weights and my appearance. And so I left for two years and I was like, I hate social media. But then I said, what if I can use it for something for the good of the community? What if I can do something? I'm not claiming to be Superman, but what if I could do something that would be of service to others? And just doing this, I've been getting a lot of messages from people saying, like, you should do more live streams. And this is why I decided to start these live streams. And I just yeah. wanted to say to Wild Child, uh, we're going to be answering questions in a few minutes. Uh, so um, if anyone has questions, feel free to hit the question box and ask, and we're going to be answering them in a few minutes towards the end of the live stream. But I really wanted to talk to you about something that is one of the most asked questions that people get, and it's something that I asked myself before, before I embarked on my healing journey. And it's that we talked a little bit about coping and a little bit about, um, you know, uh, being able to do more than that and achieving your goal. And uh, you talked about also um, when you stay at home and you feel like you want to contribute and you have to do something, but then that kind of feeling of I'm not doing enough comes. So in my, in my belief, um, in terms of coping, I feel like there's more than coping there is for you to thrive and to really live your highest potential. But of course, to reach there, you have to be able to cope first. And yeah. so, you know, I, I believe that really, and, you know, people say this, that uh, good habits are hard to form, easy to keep, and then bad habits are easy to form, hard to keep. And yeah. so that being said, um, 
how would a person who has been through certain habits because you know you have a background with addiction so i really believe that maybe that's from my personal standpoint that not every single addiction is bad because some people are addicted to success some people are addicted to reading so much some people are addicted to uh, working out but obviously there there are points and there are limits and so when people have gone through um uh, certain behaviors that have become addictions or let's say instead of addiction habits um, mm. are there ways for them to be able to change them because you know for example i'll give an example to make this easier um, right. sometimes uh, you would meet a coworker and they would say i'm sad and that's that's just an emotion but then when it's prolonged for a few more days it becomes a mood and then it's when it's prolonged for years it becomes a personality trait and then mm. it's a personality type and so for people who have been through an extended period of time of a bad habit whether it's smoking addiction to something an eating disorder um, alcohol whatever it is is there hope for people to be able to change but not just hope but a real um, tangible uh result that they could achieve. Oh, definitely. I mean, I've seen it and I, I it, there's nothing that it just brings me more joy than seeing a person who um you know, basically has maybe given up hope, right? I mean, there's a lot of people at that point who who just tried to attempt suicide and then they're seeing me for the first time, right? And so at that point in that in that person's life, they thought that life was not worth living anymore, right? And so uh but when uh i think it takes multiple things you know i think it takes like a good support system it takes that individual to be open to taking either medications or doing therapy because there's so much stigma i mean i think that a lot of the issues that stem is from the stigma of even going and asking for help right there might be a lot of people struggling out there but they think that they're weak because uh, of that they have this this issue and you're not weak at all right but again our society has given us this message and only recently are we slowly chipping away at it and allowing people to go and get help that they need so i think that uh that openness to want to change is so important once you actually have that in your heart uh, anything is possible it really is um at that point it takes patience because the one thing is it's slow you know change is so slow that's the one thing i i realized even with what we're doing right it took about a year before we we both started doing uh like really getting into it right and i remember you specifically saying i want to take this slow i want to i want to do this right and i had so much respect for you when you said that because because it's so important we are i think and especially with addiction right you have that instant um feeling of whether either it's relief or or you know feeling a little bit more intoxicated or, or euphoria we're not used to having to wait for that uh that time when you know it feels like you're a success or you're going in the right direction so i think it's important that we all realize that it takes a long time and that's okay you know it we don't have to be you know perfect every single day totally fine to to make mistakes i fail all the time you know i i feel like failure we need to change the way we look at failure we need to say failure is is totally fine you know and let's let's actually accept that as part of the process not beat ourselves up because we do that all the time right we we fail at something we're like ah oh, we suck we're we're terrible this and that we we got to end that we, and we got to make it part of the process so that when we do fail we're like it's a fine let me just figure out what i can do differently next time and the more and more you fail the more more easier it becomes to be able to overcome those things so i like to see life as kind of like a series of small tests you know and we it's up to us what what kind of tests we want to do and what kind of things we want to do in our life so um yeah absolutely people can change 100% i've seen so many people do it and um and they're so happy now they have their families they have jobs um you know they're contributing to to society and um you know th these are people who thought that they they wouldn't be able to do anything for society right it just takes yeah. that motivation and you know you it's on us to also give hope to other people to yeah. support other people who are going through their journey as well that that's i cannot stress that enough that that's that's how we change things in our society you are so right and i really love how you said uh towards the end uh something about um having i think you said uh regarding like being able to give hope towards others and supporting other people and you know 
I went through the experience of uh, this being completely transparent with everyone because I promised myself to be of being suicidal five times and it was horrible. And so for people who really think that there's no hope, uh, I, I asked that as a question for you because I really wanted to see your perspective, but there really is hope and you really, really, really can change. It's not, uh, it's not going to be an easy journey. I would be lying if I'm saying that, but that's the point of it. And the other thing you said about embracing, and I really wanted to talk about that, which is, I think there's a very fine line between embracing yourself and between accepting that there's a problem and that mm. needs to be worked on. And that was something that I also had struggled with. And then uh, going through my healing journey and where I am now, I really found that there are points where you got to admit to yourself that you have got to stare yourself in the eyes in the mirror and say, I have a problem. And right. I need to accept that I need to change now because no one, no one is going to do it for you. No one, you, and this is the problem, even me, personal experience, we wait for people to tell us that it's time to change, but really you wait and wait and wait. And then that feeling of like, oh, nobody cares. Nobody's telling me something is wrong. So maybe mm. I should just continue. And then that's the cycle that happens. And so here's where, uh, an interesting thing that I would like to ask you about. So um, with having hope for change, I know that, you know, uh, what you are, 90% of what people are uh, by, uh, by the age of 35 is what they have been created, they have been uh, learned behavior basically uh, through their whole childhood up to their adolescent period. So people, how you think and how you feel really creates your state of being. And so when you have those state of beings and that are kind of programmed because of the past, um, it becomes really difficult for people to change. So for example, um, a person who is, uh, let me try to explain this program that I'm talking about. So when you, for example, uh, you wake up on the same side of the bed, you go make your coffee in the same mug. You drive on the same uh, side of the road. You go and meet the same coworkers that uh, push the same emotional buttons that make you feel the same. And then you go home and do the same learned behaviors over and over again. It's really analogous to having a computer program just in your brain. And so right. at some point you become... Um, you become really uh, kind of programmed to do those behaviors. And when something is different, my belief from my experience is that you feel really, really uncomfortable, which triggers your emotions. And then you just start to feel like something is odd. And so your brain tells your body that I need to stop trying to change, but you don't, you don't see that because you're so programmed and um, because it's basically what I said earlier, a habit, a habit is when your body can do something better than your mind. So if you become so programmed to do that, whether it's an addiction, whether it's an eating disorder, whether it's alcohol, or, which is an addiction, but uh, anything along those lines, and you're trying to change, even just, for example, losing weight, uh, which was my experience too, uh, gaining, losing, gaining, losing. And so uh, what are the steps that people can take when they've been programmed for so many years? What's the first step? to initiating change? Because I have my own idea on it, but I want to hear from uh, you as a psychiatrist. Yeah, th that's a great question. Um, in, in our society, I feel like change isn't really even talked about. In, in a way, I, I wonder if it's, if we are kind of told not to change and not really do it, just kind of go about your day, you're fine as you are, right? And that's what we're usually, ta we're, we're usually taught. And I, I totally believe in loving yourself, of course. But one of the biggest things for me that has allowed me to finally get out of uh, just kind of like the singular uh, line of thinking and really try to change for the better was the the reality that I'm imperfect. I'm an imperfect human being and that's totally fine. You know, I, I think that me understanding that we're all quote unquote imperfect in the sense that we, we need to work on things um, it is totally fine. And that's the kind of thing that we, we need to realize about ourselves. And for me, that was a, that was a big, um, 
big realization that allowed me to continue to change. So at that point, now you have to really make a plan. Um, for me, actually just even writing it down and like in a calendar, this is what I want to do this day. This is what I want to do this day. Take it slow. Don't go too fast. Cause then if you go, if you go too fast, you might get burnt out or you may not do things and then start beating yourself up. Make it slow, but, but, you know, stay at it. It, it does take motivation uh, it's so easy to go back to old bad habits, right? Like you said, your your weight was going up and down. I'm kind of curious why that why you felt that that was happening to you. But was it because that you know you were doing really well and then something happened, uh, like a, a trauma or stress, and then you just went back to old behaviors? Is that kind of what happened with you? Uh, so good question. So for me, I uh, it was mainly first I was doing really well. I was fit and everything, and then uh, I experienced the cyberbullying on social mm -hmm. media for my weight, and so that not good enough always came back whether i lost all the weight whether i gained some back whether i was stable and so those behaviors of trying to again fit in and then at the same time being conflicted sometimes oh you know i i'm fine i should embrace myself because and this is the this is the part that upsets me because a lot of people even used to tell me well i mean everyone these days is obese come on it's fine you know, <laughs> and, and I used to just, you know, when I hear that, I just wonder, is this what we have reached to? Because right. um, I really, and, and this would be something we can talk about on another day, but there's really a very fine line between embracing yourself and also being authentic and realizing that you have a problem and you mm -hmm. really need to start solving it. And no one's going to tell you when to start or your timeline or your pace, but exactly. you need to start. And so that's for me was the biggest realization. That's when I became far more consistent is by realizing there's this program that I need to break. And the only way to break it is to do the uncomfortable. And if I'm going to feel uncomfortable and feel pain or um, the unfamiliar, that's when I know I'm making progress. That's when I said, okay, I feel not very good that I'm eating healthier at the time because it's different. And so mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, that means I'm doing something different. So I must be doing it right. I must be doing something right. And that's, I think, one of the biggest signs for people to see is that when you're trying to change a habit and you start to see um, yourself feeling uncomfortable and out of your comfort zone, or when you're trying to work out and you run two laps and the next day you run a third one and you feel so much pain, that is a good thing, in my opinion, that type of pain at least, because you are seeing some sort of progress. You stepped yourself a bit up than what you usually do. And so that feeling of being uncomfortable is in my personal opinion, where the learning starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm actually kind of curious about your, your impression because another thing with change is change to what, right? Like what is it that we're actually trying to do in terms of our change? So if we, if we take something like uh, weight loss, for you, did you find it was helpful to actually have like a number in your head? This is what I want to get. This is my goal. Or was it simply, uh, a, was it, uh, you made a uh, realization like, you know what, I'm just going to lose weight until I feel happy with myself. What, what did you do? That's a very good question. I'm, I've always been very interested in like psychology and stuff. So I do a lot of research, but so I really tried so many things for me. I struggled with an eating disorder. So for me, like weight was not uh, losing weight, gaining weight. All of that was not, it was one of perhaps not one of the hardest journey I've ever had because uh, for people who don't know here in six months, I gained a hundred LBs. And then I committed to change and then I lost them and then I gained some back and I lost them. And for someone who to gain that much weight and go through the pain of losing it and then gain it back, mm -hmm. it's very, very, very difficult. And it's, it's when you are at the lowest point and you feel like I failed. I just, right. and right. you know, and that's where most people don't, uh, don't get back up and they give up, unfortunately. And so for me, I took it as, okay, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? And I had to accept. And it doesn't, for me, I didn't take it as, oh, I did this horrific mistake. I, yes, I felt like I failed at first, but then I said, well, that's great. Because if I didn't fail, I wouldn't learn. And so right. now that I failed, let me see how can I 
fix this so that I can not only learn, but impact others. Because if I learn this and how to fix this, it might help someone, it might help someone else. It might help the school teacher that might help students. It might help a bunch of people. So yeah. I thought for me, it was, I started with what you said, having the number, okay, I need to have this goal. And then that didn't work because when you're at that number, that number isn't good enough. What's next? Right. <laughs> yeah. so, and then you, you reach to the point where there's nothing anymore to lose for you because your body is just at its point. And then you're mm -hmm. like, okay, so what now? And then right. you're like, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm too, I'm too uh, thin now. Maybe I should eat more. And then you just, you're never happy because that is just a number. And so right. it doesn't make, it doesn't, give you any feeling it's just a number so for me it was diving deep into myself and saying okay what do I really want like what 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 is it that I want am I chasing weight or am I chasing health am mm. I chasing inner happiness or am I chasing external happiness right it's, that was the most important uh, realization for me and then I said who cares uh, what I look like or what weight I am? It, it's not like I, I, I start this live stream with you and say, hey, what's your weight? My weight is this much. What about you? You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody says that. Nobody cares. And that was the biggest realization for myself. Let me just work on the inside job. Who cares about the outside? Because no one really cares. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, and I think, I think what you said is so important. Um, and I think this needs to really be emphasized and, and really being talked about way more in, in our society is that, like you said, change is never a singular line. It's never like, okay, you're just, you're just going to be okay, just if you continue doing this. No, it's a zigzag. It's you go backwards, you go forwards. And it's this chaotic process, frustrating, um, you know, you're going you're to have a lot of self-doubt, but the main thing that I think is important is being okay with that, embracing that, being, being, just knowing that that is the process. And as long as you are trying to live your life the best, uh, not only for your family and friends, uh, your, your profession, if you will, but in just in society, if you're really trying your best to be kind, to be a good person. Um, you know, give radical honesty. And then, you know, if, if some things are going wrong with some uh, some other issues, be honest about it. But come from a, a point of empathy and love. Um, if we're able to do that on a daily basis, and that's our goal, you know, that's our goal for change. That's how I feel. You get real happiness, you know, or at least maybe not even happiness is the right word, but contentness. I think because like happiness is like euphoria, and I think it's impossible to be completely <laughs> euphoric like twenty four seven, right? Uh, but it, but just being okay in your skin, I, I think that is for me. That's my goal at the end of the day. That's all I focus on. Everything else is external. Everything else is uh, ability for me to try my best. But even if I fail along the way, like I, I say we're not able to deliver this message in, in a big way. It's okay. We tried, right? At the end of the day, we tried. And you never know when another opportunity is going to come down the line. You know, it's exactly. that, that one too. Exactly. And I think what it comes down to is what you said. So it's really not just embracing oneself, but embracing change. Because right. when you start to embrace change, you just start to accept that it's a journey. And for me, the most, you know, one of the biggest realizations I had was when I wanted to start the HEAL community, I was delaying it saying, okay, let me start it when I have healed. But then mm. I realized that it's not an end goal. And the whole point is to show people my healing journey and to show them that you're not alone and to make them relate to it. So it's really a journey and embracing this journey and kind of being content, as you said, because what is happiness? What is really happiness? Right. Uh, what is it? Because uh, people chase happiness. And it's funny because people like to kind of uh, chase, uh, try to find happiness and try to do anything to be happy. And they say, I just want to be happy. But what's right. happy for you is different for me. What's exactly. happening for each person is different. Personally, for me, I would rather be uh, sitting in nature uh, on the beach, uh, sipping a coconut than uh, sitting at the top of uh, the ranks or something. Like, uh, for me, it's freedom. So for different people, it's different things. And this is where people, and I personally believe this, and a lot of people, when they start to attribute happiness to objects and materialism, that's not a problem. That's fine. But it's 
I think that's when confusion starts between mm -hmm. what is real happiness and what you're trying to use as temporary happiness. These things can make your life better, yes, but yeah. they can only make what's inside better. So if you don't have what's inside happening right, then it's not going to work. Exactly. Yeah, no, absolutely right. Um, and actually, I just wanted to give a shout out to Wild Child DC. She's, she's making some excellent comments. Yeah. And, and okay. some, really, uh, some really great. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, she's talking about how you get depressed when you're eating more during COVID. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, the health. Uh, that's <laughs> the hardest thing, right? You're staying home all the time. It's so hard to want to exercise or to eat well, right? You start ordering out all the time. Um, and so. Yeah, you know, because we know we don't know what's going to come our way externally. That that's a thing of it, right? Who could have guessed that COVID uh, would have happened, right? Or, or, and so, and uh, and then these protests and all that stuff. You never know what's going to happen, and so that's where, for me, it, my 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 real change and my real goal became so much more simpler, right? Before it was about okay, I need to become a psychiatrist. I need to be uh, one of the best in my profession, and then it became okay. Well, I need to try to educate people. But at the end of the day, all those things were, were good, I was, you know, but I still was never able to get it because I don't think there's really that goal where you're just going to be happy forever, right? You know, that's why there's so many people uh, who have billions of dollars and it's not enough. It's never enough. You know, they, they, they just continue going. And um, at the end of the day, when you just have to focus on yourself and say, am I doing the right thing for society? Am I being a good person for my family, for my friends? Just keep it as simple as that. And I think that's where the money is, personally. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's, that's such a good point. And uh, I just want to say, if you have questions, please ask them in the question box, because we're going to answer them in uh, a few minutes. So, um, yeah, so what you were saying, that's, that's very true, because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, really, I think we all try to chase this happiness. And when you overthink it too much, it's going to become external. And you're really going to start, even if you try to overthink being happy internally, it doesn't really work like that. It's, it's as you said, it's being content and mm -hmm. content is not really euphoria. It's just kind of, you know, being okay in your own skin, in your own life, in what you do. And I think that's, that's a very, very, very important point that you said. And um, absolutely reading the happiness is through perception. You can, uh, have all negative around you, but if you step in the right perception, there's happiness found. Yes, mm. that's very true. That's, it, point, yeah. that's an excellent point. It's about perspective, you know. Uh, there, I've seen so many videos of homeless people who are so content with life because they learned, unfortunately, the hard way that uh, what matters is love and our love for one another and just being happy with what you have and this is why minimalism is now this trend that's happening that oh let's be minimalist because people are just realizing that all these objects don't matter they can be uh, they can add but they're never going to go to the root of what things are exactly yeah no it's so it's so important uh, that that comment about um, there is so much negativity all over us, right? All over. I mean, you go, you, you turn on the news, pretty much all negative stuff. They, they never focus on all the good that's actually being done all around us. And um, the money comes. Exactly. I mean, yeah, because <laughs> all they're caring about is getting people to watch. And unfortunately, people love drama, right? People love drama. People, um, and, and so, you know, that's how people end up glued onto the TV and just watching what, what one politician says or the other politician and um, at the end of the day, this hate can easily, easily seep into our into our bodies. And we have to be very careful about that. Uh, that was something for me that was actually something that I, I recently uh, realized I had to change. You know, like I was so frustrated with everything that I was seeing because I've been really following uh, politically what, you know, what's been going on uh, for years and years. And I've been increasingly frustrated. You know, you know, it didn't matter which party was there. I just saw the people being left behind almost at every uh, law that was being passed. And so I was getting all this anger within me, right? Why is this happening? And I realized that it's not helping, you know, like the, the, if, if I'm trying to convince somebody of my point of view, but I'm coming with anger, people get defensive about that, right? People don't actually hear your message. They hear the anger instead. And so 
that's where for me my change has been trying to simply just accept this is what society is and just you know just radical accept- acceptance of it and stop being so frustrated and just go out there and try to do your best that's it right and uh, once i i kind of felt that 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 changed everything for me that perspective has really been really helpful i love how you say that because i was just talking about that with a therapist the other day and uh not my therapist just someone i met on social media because that would be weird but uh i was talking with a therapist about with a therapist i met on social media about that and i have faced that but thankfully i faced it earlier when i was like very young like 17 18 i made a commitment to stop watching the news i yeah. only asked my family if there's something important let me know and right. i would watch the important things for example about coronavirus just the most important things that i need to know uh, because why would i sit on my couch watching the tv on all this negativity when i can get out and do something and so with the time i did this partnership with direct relief and i thought if i had been watching the news i would just have been frustrated and frustrated and angrier and angrier and then i any word from someone who has a different perspective would make me frustrated and it's really people don't see you know i i i just got my bachelor's in marketing uh, two days ago or three days ago so for me i understand that this is all marketing when people need to really see that this is all money money dollar signs everywhere when you right. join this group and that group fights with that group and that's media that's money mm-hmm. for everybody and right. for the the ones at the top not for everybody but yeah. it's uh people need to start to stop kind of just uh, following they need to start making their own opinions and standing up for themselves and realizing you know is this really is what's happening really right even though the majority are doing it mm-hmm. is it the right thing are we, right. are we really just following i mean what are we going to do because contribution is is different for everybody so for some people they um uh, donate for some people they uh protest for some others they um uh, go vegan they buy electric cars everybody contributes in a different way and right. that goes back to um you know um uh, how i said about everything is varying for different people and when you asked uh, about earlier about my experience with even uh, weight and weight loss and uh, weight gain it's for me i feel like the solution is not the same for everybody whether right. we're talking about contribution or or a goal that you have in life or something that you want to achieve uh like with me going back to that earlier conversation we had uh when i was going to see someone uh, a mental health professional for my eating disorder the first thing we would do every single session is weigh myself and i did yeah. that for a year and then i'm like that's strange like i i'm weighing myself every time at the start of the session and during the session we uh 